football camp and then eventually just getting walking up to court. I mean, it's too easy for them. I think they're too good. I think there was a game plan. Like, No Tomorrow knew that that was going to be a thing. So they're like, oh, we'll just get globals that can counter push and take the top lane. But we know on Dragonshire, which lane are you likely to end through? It's bottom. You can't very easily end through the death bridge. And even getting the well at the beginning of the game, Glowering held onto that lane enough that Tempo Storm just pushed way faster. They, they played it how they want to play it. The early game strategies are very apparent for No Tomorrow. Getting the well, getting control the minute Blaze has to hearth. Right. Tempos didn't send any resources up, denied them XP. So No Tomorrow, they played that part well. They got the first DK, they got to 10 first. But it's just once you get past that early game, Tempo Storm, they're, they're used to winning, right? So when it's when you're winning, you are it's easier to find win conditions and understand how to win. When you are not as accustomed to winning as Tempo Storm, you're, more, you're playing more defensively, trying to respond to what, even if you're ahead, you're still trying to figure out how not to lose. Where Tempo Storm, they're trying to figure out how to win. I think that's kind of what separates these two teams right now. Well, no, tomorrow I'll get one more chance to try to get a game off of Tempo Storm, and they'll get that chance after the break. Stay tuned. Keep up with your favorite players and teams on the official HGC website for desktop and mobile. Stats, archived matches, and everything you need to stay up to date with the global Heroes of the Storm Esports League. Watch live on game days and upgrade your Heroes of the Storm knowledge. 2018 promises to be the best year yet. Look for expanded statistics, enhanced viewing experiences, and more on your home for the HGC. Friends, so nice to see you around the hearth once more. You know, even Paladin is definitely one of the strongest contenders, if not the strongest at this point. The actual class diversity still remains high. Bunny Hopper I'm has sure. conceded. A8 is going to the summer championship. This time we're going to be seeing different takes on the same types of decks and different lineup strategies. Oh! Oh! oh. It's go time! This is the Hearthstone Summer Championship!
Ladies and gentlemen, I have a grave atrocity to report, and it is not that No Tomorrow has been unable to get a win yet over Tempo Storm. It's in fact that this Alliance scum has stolen my Brightwing. Actually, she just changed allegiances. She's like, I don't know what this Gilly something is on about Horde. I don't, I don't think that's true. I don't believe you. I refuse to doubt my love, my favorite, my Brightwing. You didn't even fix her. Her horns are messed up. I got you. Don't worry. <laughs> what have you been doing to you know poor what, Brightwing? You know where we're giving her love. I don't know. We're, we're going to Towers of Doom for game three between No Tomorrow Ooh, We and saw her on Towers and of Doom. And we might see. I was going to say that. We Just might yesterday. see her again. Uh, another tempo special. Uh, no Tomorrow likes this map, too. They picked it versus Endemics. So this is an even playing field. Temple's pretty good at this battleground. Yeah, I mean, no tomorrow. They've had really good early games so far. It's a matter of putting together the complete game. I think you can get away with it against some other teams where you kind of improvise, but I feel like against the team like Tempo Storm, you better have an early game plan. You better have a, a second game early plan. game plan. You better have oh, a third early game plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That, Late game plan. It's like second breakfast. Mm -hmm. I want one of Hobbit. that. Can you do this? draft so I can get yeah. some second breakfast? I mean, All right, it, see you in a second. It's, it's, I think it's like 3 or 4 o'clock. That sounds like the perfect breakfast time to me. <laughs> like, we're going to have to talk <laughs> about breakfast times. Haven't you heard of brunch and Brenner? Brenner? And, okay, and brunch is one. <laughs> Brenner. Eh, I don't know. You ever pancakes for dinner? I love it. But could if you're in certain areas of the south or in the northeast, it would be brupper. Brupper. That's not a thing. My East Coast folks it's know what, what I'm talking about. Brupper. That makes no sense. Brightwing, eat him for Brupper for saying such a thing. <laughs> we are getting into the draft for game three. Towers of Doom, uh, but there has to be a thought. All of the globals have to be a thought, especially from what we've seen from No Tomorrow these last two games. No Tomorrow banned out Abathur on Cursed on, in map number one, so they know, and Fan is known to play Abathur on, for a very long period of time, and it's, this is a map that you can run that on, so clearly they have an idea of what Tempo is capable of. I wonder if that comes in here again. Well, the only reason I'd say maybe it's different is because they're in first pick position this time if they want Abathur. They ban Tracer. We'll see if Tempo Storm bans Abathur now. It, Abathur feels like it would be what No Tomorrow wants to do. They like being aggressive. They like the Grey Mains. They like the Genjis. It seems to fit into their playstyle really well. It's just a matter of the kind of punishment from Tempo Storm. Uh, that comes against that Abathur. Well, the Genji, yeah, I was going to say, the Genji in particular is definitely something I think is going to hold that high priority. So picking that up with their first pick slot. Blaze, Dahaka, we've seen a lot of that so far. Blaze in particular for Glaurung. And so Dahaka, we know No Tomorrow played that as well in their first few games. So two heroes that do have a major impact within the team fights, but also globally as we've seen so far. So will that be a priority here in the early game? Jaina, another hero that we tend to look at. Uh, I don't think it has priority in this rotation generally unless the mouth is available, but with Deckard, things have been changing a bit. I could see them picking, if they want to get Abathur and deny it from Genji, getting Abathur and Jaina there so that it doesn't get banned away. Because No Tomorrow have banned Jaina versus Tempo already once. If they are going to give the Abathur up, which double Genji is pretty scary, they could make sure to get to Hakka here for Glaurung so that they have that global pressure against that. Well, one of the things that you can do, Double Genji doesn't quite have the same pop after the initial burst, and Blaze obviously has been that. Or take both. Wow, that is... Okay, keep in mind, this is something that when you think about Tempo Storm, you have to look back historically at random things that they've done, and one of those things was run a main tank to Haka. That has happened before when they ran like a full melee composition and a support. I don't see that anymore. That was kind of part one uh, in phase one, but... I'd say anything is possible. What about a main tank to Haka support Abathur? Ooh. I mean, the, one, of the, one of the key elements, if you're running a solo support Abathur, you either have to have mobility or self-healing or both, which is why you see Genjis, mm -hmm. you see Muradins, which have to self-heal. We even saw a Falstad composition do that in Europe because of the hammer gains at level four. So if you're going to run a solo Abathur, you have to have somebody with self-heal or mobility or both. Technically, this is the start. I don't, we'll see how it unfolds. Yeah, I think at the very <laughs> least we'd see another tank with that, but 
who knows with those two picks, but it does deny the Abathur from that Genji. Hanzo and Blaze will be the choices for No Tomorrow. No Tomorrow get both the Shimada brothers. A lot of camp control from Hanzo, the engagements from Dragon's Arrow, follow up Jet Propulsion Sue, and then Genji to just clean up how he sees best. So with all that, that is all your damage, and now you have to look at tanks and back and your support. And we've seen a lot of Lucio. It's something that was, you know, some we saw Akabase play a lot of in Phase One, already making its way here into Phase Two. So Lucio, is that something you want to deal with? Do you have to worry about the sound barrier? Do you have interrupts in case he does go that route? Uther, it looks like they want to make sure and just deny the Dragon Blade potential of a Genji to make sure they can survive whatever the onslaught is with. A diving Genji. Oh, we've seen No Tomorrow play uh, a Tyrael before, so maybe that's going to be the play for them. But for the moment, you know, though I, s I said to Haka, Abathur with the Soul Support, Abathur, I truly believe that we're going to see as normal standard of comps as Tempo Storm can bring, given the fact that they are playing with a sub. Besides the fact that it's Tempo Storm and they like to play standard, they like to play meta, they feel like they don't need to have those niche compositions unless they're if, maybe just going to have a little bit of fun. Here. If they are running standard, Abathur has always been fan on this team and in his previous teams he was 99% of the time the Abathur player, which means that they would be reliant on that sub being the, the primary carry within their role. So if that is the case, then, you know, Ven definitely has more weight on his shoulders to perform. So we'll see. I was expecting a Jaina ban there, but Muradin is a great hat target. And he has that self heal and mobility in mm -hmm. case you go solo out there. It, it's, it's hard to predict at this point. I think that's the hard part is you, you've shown nothing, and as we've seen with Abathur over the last couple months, anything's on the table at that point. So it's hard to predict anything outside of this. You anticipate standard meta. I do too. Jaina, as you said, great clone target. Really something that we see Temple Storm play a lot. But we saw them play Li Ming last game with Ben on their team, and it's a hero that he can be comfortable on. Yitar, guide my path. This reminds game? me of another Abathur composition that had Li Ming. We're going to leave it. it. It very well could be. Now you have a Wait, this possible what? Divine Palm. Well, I think it was like a Murden, maybe? This was a like, Sky Temple game you're I referencing? Got you. Yeah. I'll race you. Mouth Blaze, ETC. Nope. Wait. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Abathur, Sonia, Muradin, Karzim, Li Ming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew that. Mm -hmm. That was literally our first game. Bad. Uh, so, Karazim and Johanna. So, you look at tanks. Blaze obviously does well. He has some abilities that uh, I think do well against auto attacks. Right wing. What if Tempo Storm is hoping to get a burst off of somebody, you know, from a drag? Karazim goes in, whoever that last per pick is, if it's Greymane, they've done a good job at denying the kinds of supports that can stop that. No Divine Palm, no Divine Shield. Maybe well, we get Tyrael here. Here's the thing I want something that so thwarts auto here. attacks. Murden is one of those ones with his, his Thunderclap, Johanna is the other one. Ah, ETC, go, you can go block deal. party. It, obviously, Prog Rock's normally going to win out for the AoE heals, but Block Party is a thing. So if we get more auto attacks in here from Tempo Storm, it might be something in consideration. Deckard obviously can lock down those members if they do dive. Obviously, Li Ming comes to mind. Yeah, Li Ming again. I was going to say Cassia. It's been a while since we've seen Cassia, but Cassia into something like an ETC is a bit more vulnerable because your auto attack range is so short mm -hmm. and you're more susceptible to taking power slides. Li Ming, however, gives you the interrupt on the potential mosh pit with a wave of force. It gives you that burst damage. So everything kind of falls in, in line here with Temple Storm and what we would have expected. May have been somewhat of a deviation too, given the... Uh, stay a while and listen. Can't fully expect to be able to dive unless you have a good control over Decker Kane and can burst him down before all of a sudden that very large area stops everybody in their tracks. Um, this is another instance of having an Abathur with a Wee Ming and 
uh, Karazim, and when we saw this before from Simplicity, the clone target was Karazim. Do you think that this will continue, or do you expect to have a double Li Ming? It's a possibility. I think double Li Ming is what we'll what we're likely to see in this composition. Just a lot because, of poke. yeah, a lot of poke. It gives you a lot of burst potential. Resets do have effect there, and baseline Li Ming is pretty strong. And when you start hitting your abilities, it just requires you to obviously hit your abilities. But double Karazim, very formidable as well. If you do want to go in with that, I think the thing that scares me the most is when we saw the ETC in the earlier part of this series, I almost said Ben. Jen on the other side, we got Ben and Jen in this game. Jen was very aggressive at times, and the minute he power slid even remotely towards Tempo Storm, they punished him heavily. I think that, that he's got to be a bit more cautious in this game. The thing is, though, we saw that composition played by Simplicity fail to get those resets, and there are tools here from No Tomorrow to try to do the same. It's all about how coordinated they are with those tools to stop the aggressive natures, this aggressive styling of Tempo Storm. Well, Casanova on that Genji, we know him to do very, very well on that. Everything pretty standard here. Obviously, support build Abathur is the play, and then Iron Fist carries him, but Cattle's still holding his level one. Whether it's Laws of Hope getting the extra healing or whether it's more about getting that Iron Skin cooldown reduction, which sometimes we see against the Deckard and the potential CC of an ETC, making sure that you have a little bit shorter cooldown, a little bit smaller window, but instead he's going to go the healing. Last Cattle Johanna game, too, he played with the Holy Renewal, or not the Holy Renewal, Sims Exposed to give him that little bit of extra wave clear damage and Blessed Momentum. So we saw the deviation not getting Subdue, which is the normal Cattle talent to get those large slows, especially if he can finish the quest. Well, what we saw coming out of the bush there was Jen with a general direction. If you were to draw a line straight up and down, that was a general direction of a slide back to safety. I think he's definitely going to have to take note of that. That's going to have to be a lot of him unless he knows that their team is ready. We have a lot of setup potential with this composition. If you can get the dragon arrow, that can potentially stun out the leaming and then stay a while and listen. Then the, the power slide, then I think that you can really get the major wombo combo, combo here. And I think they have a lot of setup potential for that. Another thing to consider with the Li Ming pick over where we might have seen Jaina for Tempo Storm is besides meta, this is Vin's hero. And he showed great prowess on it before. It might just be more of a comfort hero for him, though. A lot of people play Jaina, and maybe he could have played the Avatar with Fan being on Jaina. So we'll see. Uh, I'm excited to see that Li Ming again. The camp priority early as we see the rotation over. Tomster trying to be punished. He gets the jet propulsion, but he is not going to make it back to safety, not even attempting to go left there, trying to go back to the safety of his team. There is no safety as Tempo Storm is taking what they want. And this is one of the things that we see them do with the Dahaka. It's the global. They rotated even down mid. Didn't even have to use the global because they have Abathur. If you look at the minimap, casually sitting in the lane in the bush, soaking the top lane. Vin's been great, super aggressive. Casually, a little bit too Zoning casual. people away. <laughs> and unfortunately, was caught in the top lane. Uh, Shrite must have hit a very nice scatter arrow there to mm -hmm. catch Abathur on the come out. I'm a bit surprised that uh, Fan didn't have mines down to predict the rotation up or to, to expose the rotation up. That's maybe a bit too comfortable, I'd say like Brightling on my side of the bed. Abathur's going to be in the mid. That seems more comfortable. And you watch yourself. You eyed I'll the bring Brightling. Garrosh you looked back. over as if you were going to look at me, and you looked at the Brightwing like, is it in reaching distance? And then you look down at your arms, and you're like, no, I can't reach anything. Christmas time is here. <laughs> June. Backs on out, staying mounted, just in case this rotation came in. Tempo Storm gets a lot of bot damage done again. And we have Alter Phase starting in just 10 seconds from now. A lot of global presence for no or for Tempo Storm, not so much for No Tomorrow. We'll see if they can abuse that. They do. We're going to see Dahaka go straight up. This, they have to be very careful about this Genji. But Abathur's going to start the channel over toward the right. Complete on the first one. Dahaka now has global in bottom. They're going to be looking for the fight. There's going to be the first drag. That's going to land onto Jin. He's going to power slide out. A little bit of damage coming in otherwise. And it looks like no tomorrow, despite... Oh, he barely gets the auto attack. And I was going to say, there's an Abathur on the other team. Generally, you don't see teams concede this early against an Abathur composition, knowing that you have the extra body. And I don't think... When I look at this composition of a Genji Hanzo, it's not like you're lacking damage in the early game and kill potential, but the fact that they are rotating out and they're what actually going to give up quite a bit here, they are giving up quite a bit here to Tempo early. 
did force the essence from that scroll of ceiling, but worth it. Tempo Storm does a significant amount of damage to that bot bell tower. Tempo are hoping for a very early bell tower conversion. Sapper camps are gonna be up pretty soon in the bottom too. So tomorrow need to try to stop this however they can. They do not want to be losing this belt hard this early. Yeah, that's a pretty hefty loss this early in the game, especially Hanzo and Genji don't have the best CG. Nice burrow under Jin's there. in position. Hits him with the power slide, though. With the knockback and the body blocks, they take him out. Wow, that they full committed and they got it. We're going to see the re-engage here by Cattle, but he's all alone. Mule's gonna go down. See if No Tomorrow recognizes that and tries to push forward on that. They're gonna be giving up this camp at the bottom. This is also something that we got the vision. Shrite is gonna find that. They're gonna have to come down and defend because this bot keep or bot fort at this point of the game, as you mentioned, is already has already taken the damage. Yeah, Tempo Storm just punishing that commitment from No Tomorrow to get that gank. Yes, they got it. And yes, that gives Blaze the control of that top lane, but it doesn't stop Tempo Storm from the primary game plan, which has been this bottom lane. Now getting another Sapper camp. The altar being down in the bottom though, and the slight experience advantage for No Tomorrow means that they may be able to manipulate this and keep that bell tower for a little bit longer. See the rotation down from Blaze, that's gonna be necessary as all members are down here. There's gonna be another drag landing. Ben, easy skill shots to land there. This Jin took quite a bit of damage. Sonic Arrow, there's gonna be another interrupt. Surely, there we go. Casanova, though, was forced to use his Swift Strike, strike. so his mobility is gonna be down for a bit. Cattle manning the front line, doing quite a bit. Nice scatter arrow there by Shrite. Put a little bit of power into that Johanna pick, but another drag is landing. Glaurum is setting up Ben for a lot of success. They're just looking for those resets. It's a matter of time, post-level 10, those come in. Yeah, the reason why Casa had to Swift Strike is because both Sonic Arrow uh, and another were used at the same time, the Herodric Cube. These body blocks, Glowering finds another mark, burrows, and that's just enough time for Jin to get on out. Jin needs mana, so he's gonna have to go back, see if they get the interrupt, the oil, trying to be thrown down June with the channel, and no tomorrow again without the success in this early game. And a lot of it, that's the problem with ETC is that ETC, when he is on and can get the setup, it's easy to follow up and to get the kills. But I think right now they're struggling to find ETC in this composition to see how to get value out of it in this early game because power sliding in, again, normally does not pay the same dividends. The return damage is just far too significant. I think they're a little bit cautious and justifiably so. Another sapper camp. Tempo Storm keeping the pressure on in this bottom lane. You can see Jen constantly looking. The position that he took as he rotated down, he wanted to get the power slide. But then he realizes he doesn't have the damage. Not enough follow-up. A Hanzo is not enough. The Genji is going to be the executioner of this composition. We do see the Dragon Arrow. We'll see, we're going to see if that can set that up. With this amount of lockdown, I kind of wonder if we might just get an X strike here to get that single target or that area burst damage. I think so, too. Stage dive versus Blessed Shield. Something for Jen to be cautious of. He's taken a lot of damage at the start of these fights already. Just from the sheer amounts of poke that Tempo have. And Tempo have made it to 10, not only on even playing field, but even ahead of No Tomorrow. And that bodes very well for them to be able to close this series out. Glaurum stalks in, Tomster avoiding the drag. ETC still at the top. He has the stage dive now, so there's a global in league for him, he can come down in whenever, and it might be now. There's the Dragon Arrow, and the stage dive is there. There's gonna be the Unstoppable use, the Iron Skin, and that is enough to turn around. Actually, hold on, Jen hopped in the middle of that bunker Blau. after the Blessed Shield. Blau very deep, there's gonna be another Tongue landing. There's gonna be reset number one. See if Ben can start popping off here as the clone as well. Fan on that clone leaming, trying to do damage. Looks like Tempo Storm with one kill. They're gonna fall back, channel another altar, and take a 14, 12, poor lead. Glowering was on the other side of that stay a while and listen, which did hit a lot of people. It was really well done. And I wondered if Glow had a drag or anything, uh, already using his isolation, obviously, but a drag to stop the uh, Decker Kane, but it didn't even matter. The whole of No Tomorrow turned on him and he was still able to stay alive. And then after that, the resets started rolling in for Tempo Storm. And now with that, with the sappers in the bottom, they're gonna go back to the old game plan. 
Well, I just want to point out exactly what you talked about right before that fight came to fruition, is that quite simply, Cattle used his iron skin, just like he's doing now with this. Tom, sir, he's going to get out of danger. Nobody able to interrupt. But he used his iron skin to dodge the slow, turned right around, hit the blush shield, got the lockdown on that ETC. The ETC was forced to hop into the bunker and be yes. saved with that stay while and listen, Gilly. And at that moment, ETC is effectively removed from the fight. You cannot re-engage at that point. And that is the problem with stage dive, with this amount of CC. And I know that Mosh Pit, when are you going to get the value? But with stage dive, the global's there. But finding the initiations, it's super difficult. It is really hard. He stage dove and the separation from the team having to force both of those heroic abilities out yes you're looking at a lower cooldown for the bunker but he narrowly made it in there in the first place no tomorrow i've had a lot of focus on this top sapper camp this is the second time they've been looking to get this but it's kind of the same situation that we saw on dragonshire you get more out of the bottom lane and Jin needs to stage dive out just to survive. Now that's no longer available. It's no longer here to help out. Blessed Shield is there. It feels like Tempo Storm has found their stride in this game, in this series. But he stage dove behind the keep, and I didn't think that he was necessarily in lethal range of Glaurung. Obviously, Glaurung did a very good job handling a 2v1. I'm a bit surprised uh, that that chain of events, it's just it feels something is off with this ETC pick. They're, they're struggling with it. June's going to be interrupted there. Now they're looking for the re-engages. Tempo Storm. Casanova is the only person who can try to stop that channel. It's over the side. Dragonblade's going to start cutting through Vin if he can. And with the Dragon's arrow, too, they're looking at a Johanna. The Jet Propulsion is good. But the bunker, Cattle's starting to fall rather low. Has Cattle, the Iron Skin. I was going to say, yeah, I think they were predicting a potential Swift Strike there, but now... Cattle forced to retreat. Tomster fan in on that clone confirms the kill on Degenji. That is not something you want to see. Cattle should have his blind interrupt there. Mm -hmm. There's going to be interrupt number one. Iron skin's going to be used. Look for them to re-engage here momentarily, or at least attempt to. Vin's got to get over to the side. Tomster's trying to delay or right. deny the shots, the skill shots of Vin, and does do it. No tomorrow get the altar despite losing Genji to the clone of Fan. You can see. Blocking that orb there was Tomster, and then also the mine went down a little bit late. You could also see the uh, the hammer going out there from that level 13, just out of range. So Tempo made the effort, unable to get there in time, but still find themselves up 32 to 20. I've been amazed at you know, Tomorrow's ability to keep a hold of this bot bell tower for how long ago they almost lost it. And that Glaurung's deep. Blessed Shield was used, but that's pretty much it. This is a good luck situation other than if they can palm, and they do. He's still bunker blocked. Uses the Dark Swarm finally to get away from that body block, but the Dragon's <laughs> Arrow assassinates Glaurung. And No Tomorrow is going to continue to keep this alive as long as they can get down and someone can clear those sappers. Nope. That's not in that time. moment when you're like a little bit on edge and you're like, man, I am tired of not getting these kills. I will rip this heroic, even if it's not 100% necessary. He, he used the Dragon Zero, and at that point, it's like, look, if we're not going to kill him. I'm just going to use this. And uh, so that was used. We'll see if it's back before the next altar phase in team fight. Not a super long cooldown, so should have it. But definitely a, a sign that is very much needed there for No Tomorrow. Cloud had stalked all the way in that bush. You could tell Tempo Storm was all in, just trying to get the sappers, but losing him now. They're doing all they can. He's going to stalk right back into the same bush. That is Glaurung's home, according to him. The Bell Tower taken out. Stay a while and Bunker. Forces back Tempo Storm. No Tomorrow is hanging in here. Glaurung again. The Bless Shield went out to try and keep him alive. It's not enough. And all of a sudden, the plays that are trying to be made are too much. There's going to be three-man stun it's onto done. that Jet Propulsion. Dragon Blade is out. Vin somehow survives. There's going to be a perfect Swift Strike there by Casanova. He's going to get a reset again. And that is all of a sudden no tomorrow, and the timing could not have been more perfect. Fan's going to try and make his way up here. The Locust is going to spawn, will be able to identify the Blaze, but this is an opportunity now for Triple Alter Channel here for no tomorrow. Tempo Storm may be playing from a little bit further ahead, feeling the momentum of this series, wanting to just be able to close it out. Losing Glaurung twice. This is a Dragon's Arrow Cattle. Dodges it. You know, the Palm was used on June instead of Glaurung 2 when he was low there. The second time, the first time, 
did hit its mark, but Glaring was in such a difficult position because of that bunker. He took maximum amounts of damage from that, even trying to escape. The Tempo Storm, yes, they got the Bell Tower, but the thing is, it was low for a long time. It's almost like they felt the pressure to take that thing because No Tomorrow had been holding onto it for so long that that's when we saw that get to Tempo Storm just slightly and losing out those couple of key kills. Now it's way worse because it's a fully healthy uh, bell Tower for No Tomorrow again, when Tempo Storm have been working on that for the entirety of this game. Looks like they're going to be working on it again. A little bit of a baited opportunity there by Tempo Storm. And the more people that show up here at the top, Gilly, the more opportunity Tempo Storm is going to find. If they can just continue to escort those in, sending down a Genji is not enough. And ETC obviously does have that global, but if they keep making these slow rotations, these sappers and these minions are going to continue to get added value. They're going to be held momentarily. It's actually a good pickup by Casanova to make sure and aggro those just outside of the range. Sometimes you got to be willing to wear a few of those shots. And now the minions are going to be there, giving them an opportunity. But the rotation does still feel a little bit behind. Thankfully, it was just in time so that they weren't dealing with a double camp because No Tomorrow's side sappers was right behind that of Tempo Storms. Getting there in time, they secure that. They will take a little bit of bell tower damage from the minions. But now, that's going to push during the altar phase. We'll see what Tempo Storm does about that. And they obviously still have the Tahaka, but he's up at the top. Abather hitting mid. It looks like they're just going to turn their attention directly to it. They know that when it's the top left and right, generally these trade out. They're, there's not normally a fight unless one team feels it's necessary to get back into this game. You can see the disrupt on the rotation. Tom's are trying to make that happen. The oil goes down, slows them down. Scatter arrow's going to hit as well. The Juni's going to dash forward. And right now, I think this is just going to be a trade. Yeah, no tomorrow aren't in the danger zone too much yet. This will put them down to 12. But still plenty of time to make the comeback happen. I am impressed by No Tomorrow, this game. I think they've been playing this really well, given what Tempo Storm has been bringing in. They've definitely picked it up. Ever since uh, Heroics, that first engagement or so, it was a little bit rough. Glaurung, you know, when he comes in and he's aggressive, they've been all in, because they were all the way on the side of No Tomorrow. No Tomorrow, when they don't have to be the aggressors and they can be more of the defensive option, it seems like that's done well for them against this composition from Tempo Storm that's made to be aggressive. And so the success has actually been on No Tomorrow when they're just letting Tempo Storm force the action. And then the counter engage with that stage dive seems to be working out. Tempo pushed this lane hard, seeing if someone could rotate down. Cattle was in position to maybe blast a shield and then have the follow-up damage from Leeming and Karazim. But No Tomorrow plays safely taking the very long rotation back to defend that bottom lane. And this has been kind of a stalemate going on until now. Oh my, Jun was so close. He had no time to just dash over to an ally. Instant follow-up. I pump. don't think that, yeah, or pump. I think that could have been the perfect stun. A half sec, a quarter of a second later on either of those, not getting that kill, he lives. But that was perfect follow-up CC there. This is a moment for No Tomorrow. It's a single altar phase. Flowerung deep in the lines of No Tomorrow, trying to get some top damage done. Punish No Tomorrow for being able to get that kill, but no June for 20 seconds. I think it's likely that we see Tempo Storm just give this up, especially with No Tomorrow getting so close to 20. It just the last few fights that we've seen have all been right before altar phase. And it's given such an advantage for No Tomorrow to get back into this game. And they were down by 12 at one point. By the time they complete this, they'll be down four. And that is a much better area. And as you mentioned, getting near 20, they have a camp available here at the bottom left. Something to consider. But there's also a little bit of action going on up at the top. And it looks like the rest of the teams are going to make their way up there. Leeming will be there first, the 2v1. And that was enough time. It was all that was necessary to get the kill, get the sapper camp. And now the trade on having a man advantage for 50 seconds. There's no ETC. He has stage dive when he comes out of this. Tempo Storm are going to utilize every single second of that to their advantage. What's well, the thing is that No Tomorrow was going up to respond to that. And in, in doing so, they gave up this bottom camp yes. because they could have easily taken that camp. But they opted not to. That was a, 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 a mindful decision that they made that is now going to come back and haunt them because we're now going to be looking at this bottom altar. There's no way this thing stands. They have no defense. And so the sappers are going to be here. Yes, the altar phase is going to be at the top, but regaining control of this and potentially the altar phase after this, if they survive it, mind you, if they lose both altars and a boss, it's lights out. But that was a conscious decision that 
might be hurting them here in the long run. And I feel like that's the difference between these two teams is when we see something like that happen at Tempo Storm, if Glarong is caught in the solo lane, Tempo Storm is pushing somewhere else. Yeah. They quickly just cut their losses. And for No Tomorrow, they wanted to go up, they wanted to get that kill on Glowering. That fight had been raging on for a little while, and the Sappers were important, especially because that top lane, No Tomorrow, has sustained damage there, too. there too. But now, that double altar activation is happening soon. Both teams have 20. I think the problem is, if they spend too much time down here, uh, Apather can actually deny turn-ins with mines if they just put them down right under the person. So it has to be instant. And they need somebody to be able to attack those so that doesn't happen. It looks like should be a trade here. This is definitely in favor of no tomorrow at this point. Tempo. Who did I say? No tomorrow. Yeah, same. Tempo storm. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Just make it That's sure. definitely better for them <laughs> right now. I was like, math? Wait. Yes. We're good. 13 to seven. Tempo Storm has that mule, which means they can continue to heal this back up. One of the benefits of having uh, a mule, but they couldn't quite get the last time they had the spell tower, but things things seem smoother for Tempo Storm now that they have gotten all, all of their heroes back through the few stagger deaths that they did have. They're handcuffed here to deal with the sappers. They don't have a ton of wave clear. We did see the explosive arrow at four. Shingen picked up by Hans, or excuse me, by Genji at level 13. So, you know, they do have some, but not a lot. ETC is still up at the top. Hanzo, he'll have to make his way down here momentarily, see if he's ready to make a play of the game. Sappers are directly up above this. Nice, teleport out. Are you kidding me? That was a double pronged attack. In the end, Lee Ming still falls, though, with a stay a while and listen, and Jin diving in on top of her. Cattle's going to lead the team away from the rest, has indestructible, so this is a little bit longer. Fan hoping that he can get some counter kills. Might have found it on Casanova. Jin has to protect him, does so beautifully. And with the shielding potions, they're handling this The clone. minions are here. The minions are here. They have to hop in that bush. They have to go right now. There it is. He just missed the shuriken. That is a major mistake. They're still going to pick up June here, and that's going to be good. But the minions were there. It allowed them to get there. June looking to dive, has no more jump targets. There's going to be a self palm. I don't know if he's going to make it out of here. Swift Strike does not even need it. But again, right before the altar phase, Dahak, however, did take out the top, which yes. means that this bottom being reclaimed is only going to be three shots here for no tomorrow. But there's also a sapper camp again to consider. They have to start to take control of this, find an advantage for them. Three shots gets it closer. No tomorrow, seven to ten of Tempo Storm. This is by far the closest game we've had in this whole series, Jay Howe. They're checking the boss, but again, they brought everybody along. And Shrite forced to use the Dragon Arrow. They're going to get this, but they have Cattle and Glowrun locked in here, Gilly. It's a pretty good place to get a lockdown and a kill with the control that Deckard Kane has. Jay Shrite even played a game to back end, just getting the damage, knowing that his team was there to back him up. Sapper is grabbed by No Tomorrow. I'm not, like, I guess I'm confused on some of these gank attempts because they've been very deep in enemy territory and they all backfire. I, no support, your only means of escape is a choke point because the bottom bell tower is reclaimed. That's a highly questionable decision there. Sometimes you see this when a team has a lead and the lead starts slipping away, still playing as if they have that lead. This is basically equalized. This is wow. basically going to go no tomorrow's favor if this keeps up. I mean, they have possibility. If they can get another bell tower and get five shots per, mm -hmm. they have an opportunity to potentially get double altar and just end the game. They need to rotate mid and try and take this. I don't know how much structure damage has been done, if any, but this is going to be important. If they want to try and end the game now, they need to take this down, but the entire wall is still there. It's almost too much to overcome in such a short amount of time, but they're going to prep it in case they can eventually find that opportunity. But they are starting to find their way ahead. And Li Ming still 30 seconds away before coming back. Even if they get both of these altars, it's down to two. Then boss, that's up. The sapper camps, an escort of that. They don't have something like a garage, but they do have options, a lot more options than Tempo Storm. This is spiraling out of control somehow for Tempo. They had fairly good control in the early game. Only mean, but they were spotted. Dahaka brush stalkering in. 
so he's now part of the fight. If you want to take away that win condition, you know, if you're... Which is going to be the vision. If you're no tomorrow, are you willing to concede it? Is it something that you're okay with giving up? Or are you? do you think this is such a huge point of interest? We're looking at double altar. No matter what, this game will be over for tempo if one is channel. Boss control. There's no mosh pit from that. Stay a while and listen. There's just a whole lot of control from Deckard Kane. I'm looking at the repulsion from Li Ming. Bunker allows for a much longer fight from there. But there's no cleanse to cleanse someone from that repulsion. You have to maybe stage dive on top. I like this call by No Tomorrow to get this sapper camp. This will give them some bot lane pressure. Obviously, Dahaka dealing with this. It's actually a pretty decent wave here for this late in the game. So the fact that No Tomorrow will be conceding this, they have not reclaimed the top left yet. I don't know if they can make it over to defend Dahaka again. Hanzo, they're actually going to go in on Glauron. There's going to be the isolation used. Swift Strike's going to be there. Essence is going to be used. I don't think they can get the takedown. Mm. But Sappers are still a threat. Sappers are lethal here. Double Bell Tower, at least momentarily, in the bottom here for No Tomorrow. A chance to close this out. Yes, but Jayhound, nobody is stopping the Sappers at the top. So they can easily get a channel dive. as well. Yeah, they get that channel on the three Sappers, and this will be Tempo Storm walking away with a win here. Anybody that channels at this moment, it's game over. It is game over at this point. It doesn't matter if Dahaka takes down the bottom. He just has to keep the sappers from crossing. It's still fan. That's a body that's going to be there to interrupt. That's been taken down. Dahaka, he's at the Dahaka. bottom. Dahaka's at the bottom. Oh, I don't no think tomorrow. they can get down there. There's going to be the condemn back in. No stage dive. That's enough. The blink, but it's too late. I. You I feel like that should have been able to be stopped. Yeah, the, there was a condemn by Cattle to keep ETC reeled in just for a moment. And the bolt over by ETC, so close. But you've got to keep an eye on that. Tahaka just has to clear the sappers. I mean, you only have to clear two at that point. And then globaling in back door, slipped away. But that whole early game was controlled by Tempo Storm, which is why they were even in the position that they were able to recover what was a sketchy mid game. It was no tomorrow, a punishing mid game though too for them. That was a pretty crazy game, but in the end, Tempo Storm prevails and wins three to zero. Sketchy to say the least. Some of those calls were super aggressive Which without is, a whole lot there. Yeah, and you'd understand why it felt like they could get that Glauron kill again. You get rid of a global, you're getting rid of a lot of things, but you get you use stage dive for that, and then you all of a sudden don't have someone with the global to defend versus the sappers there. You can't stage dive back on the point too, though that would have taken time. He had bolt cattle really well done to try to slow that down from ETC too, but it felt like especially having Having a Genji to someone, the split just wasn't quite there. Getting yeah. a little overzealous to get some kills. The mobility has to kind of linger. It has mm -hmm. to be a roaming mobility style hero, and Genji is that hero. If you need to go up, you can swift strike, you can agility in, and you have shurikens, which you can hit at max range or even swift strike at worst. Then it's one of those things you can go back, watch the VOD, learn from it, and it's an opportunity in the heat of the moment. Those are high pressure situations where you're taking on what was the number one team and a top four team internationally. You're just trying to take a game off of them. I mean, taking a series is difficult enough as it is, but taking a game off this team, super difficult. And in those moments, you know, sometimes the pressure can get to you. I feel like No Tomorrow had a, an even better showing than they did versus Endemic here. And they yes. are playing versus Tempo Storm. It's Tempo Storm's a sub, but it's still Tempo Storm. So I think it's really nice for No Tomorrow that though they didn't win a game this weekend, still ending on more of a, 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 a successful series than the previous series shows growth that they can continue to expound on. We're going to check in with Caterpillar and who have you got there, Cattle? <laughs> I I can't say her name because she's a she's a different game character. Oh, OK. <laughs> <a cutie. laughs> it's it's heresy. I can't do it. Oh, OK. Well, we can respect that. Congratulations. You guys got the win 3-0. Last game got a little scary for a little bit. Uh, walk me through some of the things that you guys were talking about as that continued to play out. Uh, we just tried to keep our composure. Mm -hmm. It kind of fell apart and we kept getting picked, but we just had to make sure that we, we waited for everyone to, to respawn so that we'd be able to at least have a good 5v5 and then we managed to play a good last phase. 
Well, Cattle, uh, uh, you uh, being one of the teams that went to midseason brawl and now have come back, we've seen a whole lot of different picks. The meta seems very wide open in North America. And uh, do you feel like that's going to continue? And do you feel like that's because of the patch that we're playing on? Do you feel like that's because North America and the teams evolving with their new rosters is kind of developed to that? Do you expect that to continue? I, I expect it to kind of shift back towards the mid-season uh, meta. I think okay. right now the meta is just mostly wrong, <laughs> like okay. pretty much. I don't know. There, there's a lot of picks that don't make any sense to me personally, but we'll see how it plays out with uh, patch changes and stuff. Well, one of the picks that we saw you guys play uh, a couple of games, and then we've seen a lot of teams playing, is Li Ming. Where do you feel her place is in the meta right now? I think she's pretty far up there. She's just... She's a really solid hero, just being able to play around her resets, and she has really good follow-up damage, and I don't know. She's just very, very solid, as long as you have enough wave clear to go with her. All right, cool. Congratulations. Jay, how do you have any questions? Yeah, obviously you guys have a big decision still to make, but you brought in a sub for this weekend in Vin, who was on that Li Ming. When you're looking to fill that role, obviously, Psalm, that's a huge shoes to fill. How would you assess Vin's performance today just in that sub role? I think he did pretty well. He's he's doing pretty well so far in the games we've tried him out in. He has good comms and he has good mechanics. And um, yeah, today he fit in well. And yeah, hopefully it keeps going like that. Well, everything that I've looked from your team, the core of your team, and it's something that you touched upon in your interview as well, the four core of your team has such experience on your side. Bringing somebody in is going to be a big decision. Do you think it's going to be a difficult process as the season goes on, or do you feel that it's going to be easier since you have so many things under your belt that your team does well? How do you see the process in your ranking here as we move towards Phase 2? I think it's all about finding the right person. As long as we find someone who's like very receptive to feedback and just has a has a good attitude and just learns fast, then I think we won't have any issues doing well and still placing as high as we want to. Well, you guys uh, continue to keep up the Dragonshire magic. I, I don't know how you guys managed to do it. You go from double camp to triple camp today. Are you surprised still that you're able to pull this off game after game? Uh, slightly, not necessarily that game. They just had a really, really weak draft for the map, and it just let us exploit it by just staying bot lane. But I, I don't know. I think people are slowly catching on to how to properly play and draft the map, so I don't expect it to work too much longer. <laughs> Well, everything you guys have done uh, throughout the day has looked good, and it's ex it's what I expected from your team. It's good to see you guys back from midseason brawl. Congratulations today. Yeah, thank you. Cattle, before I let you go and uh, give your shout outs, your next match is going to be versus Octalysis next week. We've seen yeah. now their their new roster. Lost one game to LFM, but otherwise went through with pretty flying colors. What are you thinking about that match? Uh, definitely a hard matchup. Uh, they're in a pretty good spot right now. I think their roster changes worked out pretty well for them. And yeah, we're going to have to get a lot of good practice in to beat them. All right. Well, good luck to you for that. And now is the time okay. for shout outs if you've got them. Uh, yeah, shout outs to Tempo Storm, of course. Thank you for all the support. And shout outs to our sponsors, Red Bull, Twitch, NVIDIA, and our newest sponsor, Overwolf. And a uh, huge shout out to Vin. Props to him for stepping up today. He played really well. And uh, hopefully it works out. Awesome. Yeah. Congrats, Cattle. Thanks for joining us and good luck with your hunt. Goodbye. <laughs> Uh, uh, it, it, as we talked about before, atmosphere very important to Tempo Storm. We can kind of hear why to Caterpillar. And as you said, Vin looked good there. Well, at the close of that, he said hopefully it continues to work out. I think they were happy with that today. Obviously, they still have another week of potential sub mm -hmm. if they choose to take it. So they get a two-week grace there. So we'll see how what decision they make and whether today was a good enough showing. Obviously, you mentioned the tryouts there. So it did look good. It seemed like it fit in. And again, one of the things that I mentioned, when you have this core four group and you have Cattle on the front line and you're role is to I'm going to put something in place I want you to aim at it please do well I'd say that's a little bit easier role to fill than like a tank role a support role and mm. things like that so for Vin to come in it's got to feel good to get to get that type of game under your belt yeah I think he's probably very happy <laughs> with this and props to you Vin you killed it today uh, we've still got more to go before the end of the week and that's endemic versus simplicity don't go anywhere we'll be back soon with more HGC 
does rip this mosh pit, mosh. which it looks like he's going to do. There's two members down. Bless Shield was used. There's going to be a Twilight Dream in response, Gilly. Yeah, but the bunker is keeping Timbo Storm alive and on the point as they cycle out. Fan, though, dies to Jay Shritta in the back. The boss taken by Tempo Storm. Then is starting to swipe through all of No Tomorrow with a low health bar, but it's enough. Scroll of ceiling. No Tomorrow is wiped as Tempo Storm gets a pentakill. Tempo Storm weathers the storm, the curse of No Tomorrow. No Tomorrow are desperate for a keep. They want to have a win condition open up their own. They're going to power slide in. That scroll of ceiling, it's maximum amounts of damage with that scroll of stone curse, a double kill in the blink of an eye. The minute you power slide in as an ETC, you better be ready as a team to commit the kill. As Shrite, he goes in, tries to trade out. It's a very long retreat. That it is. Casanova will do, try to finish the job. The later ones to try and get in position to find that primary target. We saw the dismount onto June. He's just not able to get all the way into position, but see if they can get it there. Glaurum, Blunker just in time. Lucio is going to be the first to fall in this fight. See if they can get them out of there. Is the DK continuing to bring the fire, but it's not enough. Is Johanna down as well? Casanova going to be the third in Tempo Storm, starting to destroy No Tomorrow. Finn got kicked right on top of the Phoenix. And that is exactly where that Lee Ming was looking to see if he's ready to make a play of the game. Sappers are directly up above this. Nice. Teleport out. Are you kidding me? That was a double pronged attack. In the end, Lee Ming still falls though with the stay while listen and Jin diving in on top of her. Cattle's gonna lead the team away from the rest. Has indestructible, so this is a little bit longer. Fan hoping that he can get some counter kills. Might have found it on Casanova. Jin has to protect him. Does so beautifully. And with the shielding potions, they're handling this. The clone. minions are here. The minions are here. They have to hop in that bush. They have to go right now. There it is. He just missed the shuriken. That is a major mistake. They're still gonna pick up June here, and that's gonna be good. But the minions were there and allowed them to get their June looking to dive. Has no more jump targets. There's gonna be a self palm. I don't know if he's gonna make it out of here. Switch strike does not even needed. Sometimes you see this when a team has a lead and the lead starts slipping away, still playing as if they have that lead. This is basically equalized. This is wow. basically going to go no tomorrow's favor if this keeps up. Keep the sappers from crossing. It's still fan. That's a body that's going to be there to interrupt. That's been taken down to Haka. He's at the, the bottom. Haka. The Haka's at the bottom. Oh, I don't no think tomorrow. they can get down there. There's going to be the condemned back in. No stage time. That's enough. The blink, but it's too late. Keep up with your favorite players and teams on the official HGC website for desktop and mobile. Stats, archived matches, and everything you need to stay up to date with the global Heroes of the Storm Esports League. Watch live on game days and upgrade your Heroes of the Storm knowledge. 2018 promises to be the best year yet. Look for expanded statistics, enhanced viewing experiences, and more on your home for the HGC.
forgotten what makes us strong. Friends, so nice to see you around the hearth once more. You know, even Paladin is definitely one of the strongest contenders, if not the strongest at this point. The actual class diversity still remains high. Bunny Hopper can has conceded. AH is going to the Summer Championship. This time, we're going to be seeing different takes on the same types of decks and different lineup strategies. Oh! Oh! oh. It's go time! This is the Hearthstone Summer Championship!
there's only one series left to end the HGC weekend, the first weekend back in phase two. It has been an awesome weekend full of a lot of great plays in every region. And I'm a little sad that our weekend's gonna be over, but we're ending on a good one. Endemic versus Simplicity. I don't know what he's laughing at. Accessories for the day. <laughs> Didn't see that in the wardrobe room, but uh, you know, I like how it's conspicuously in a place to where I can't exactly like take it from you this go around because I'd probably like, be reported for assault or something <laughs> if I try and take something from around your neck. So, <laughs> face shift is off cooldown or was <laughs> off cooldown, and now <laughs> she's here fully supporting me, giving me the pixie dust Who and the shield. One? She went level seven. She shield got dust. the shield too. I'm ready. Yeah, it's a nice accessory uh, f to take us into the next series. I'm sure our hair and makeup person was totally fine with this one. It matches the red of the horde extremely well. Let's check in with the standings after that last win, the first win for Tempo Storm of phase two. And we're talking about Endemic because they have the possibility of being atop the standings. They're already there tied up with Heroes, Hearthlock, Talisus, and Tempo Storm, but they're the only team now who can possibly get two wins to close out the uh, the weekend. The other team would have been Team Freedom, but losing the Heroes, Hearth, Esports. Well, we will have to put a little bit of a side note beside it, because if they do pull off this victory, they have found now face the only two teams that are capable of having two losses at least coming into Sunday, in No Tomorrow and Simplicity. Mm -hmm. So he, they would be responsible for one each of those. So there is still a lot of teams to go through before we can look at them at 2-0 and be like, all right, this is the team. It's a very good start for a team because we look at seven series that you have to play before that midseason brawl. And if you can start out 2-0, and generally we've seen if you can get to that 4-3 and mark, that 5-2 and mark, you make it to the Western Clash, and that's the first step towards getting more and more success, and then, of course, to BlizzCon. Well, these two teams both have people I love getting to talk to whenever we get to hear from them, and that's Michael Udall and Hosty. So let's hear their thoughts on this upcoming match. Yeah, so Simplicity has picked up Equinox as a coach, and he's a person and player that I really respect. Simplicity as a whole is going to be a lot better this split, in my opinion. I mean, I think it's really important that we come out really strong in week one and beat Simplicity and No Tomorrow, right? Because we're out here trying to prove that we're one of the top teams in North America, and the only way to do that is to come out every single week and show that, right? And that's something that consistently the last two years teams I've been on have not been able to do, right? For whatever reason, we've just been inconsistent, right? And you need to come out every single week and just prove that you're the best. I expect the series with Simplicity to be, you know, I, I feel like we're still favored, uh, but I, I could see it go 3-1 or maybe even 3-2 in our favor. And they generally have proven that at the beginning of the season, they're much better than at the end of the season. Uh, and I mean, so week one, like, I feel like they're going to be practicing hard, really motivated, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. So this weekend being... Um... Our first weekend starting the HEC with our current roster, with all our uh, role swaps as well. We're mostly looking into the rebuilding phase, of course. We want to see how we do on the tournament day. Endemic made some crazy roster swaps. I mean, they brought on some incredibly talented players, and they're all extremely hungry. On top of that, they just had an amazing sponsorship pickup. So, that being said, we definitely do want the win, and, and we think we could dunk on Endemic, so I think it's going to be a 3-0. Well, like No Tomorrow, Simplicity in their drafting. Uh, drafted a little more, more to their strengths, what we would have expected, getting to see some nostalgia factor like mages for K1 Pro, his Jaina, also Tiger JK's Karzim. And though we saw by the third game things were standardized a lot, it was still a hard loss for them versus Team Freedom 0-3. to Yeah, when we saw that second game when it was Johanna Stitches, not the most common that we've seen, and then not going slam build at one because you need the defensive utility. Mm -hmm. It just felt like it was lacking a lot, and then things started to shore up by game three, but it was too far behind at that point. So look for them, I think, to fix some of those mistakes in draft and maybe do things a little bit differently. And a hero that you and I were talking about, kind of in the mage role, is Medivh. Hosty is known for Medivh. If you've ever tuned into his stream, I think the majority